good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, December 11th meeting of the Campbell County School Board. Merry Christmas to everyone, and I'm glad to see everyone here tonight, brave in the cold weather. At this time, before we start the meeting, we'll uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item up tonight is uh, we have a presentation, Growing Friendships. Good evening, everybody. So is this, can you guys hear me good? Okay, speak, perfect. Speak loud. Okay, perfect. So we're here to represent Growing Friendships, which is the inclusive program that bridges both gen ed and special ed populations at Rustburg High School. And I'm Lauren Kirby, and this is Ms. Womack and Ms. Wentz. How do you work? Sorry. Okay, so first I'll start with explaining how we get it started at the beginning of every semester. So we have sign up where at the back to school days we have a table with a sign up sheet for students to sign up for both SCA and Growing Your Friendships. And then once we have that list of students that we want to sign up, we go through the list and we submit that to Dr. Shields, the principal and he will approve each student that is in good standing with the school, and that's either with behavior, attendance, good grades, and so on. And whatever students are approved, then we sit down with as a meeting, and we go through and we pair them, one gen ed student to one special ed student. And then once we have all the pairings together, we have a welcoming meeting for all the gen ed students where we tell them their buddy, and we tell them their placement within the class that they will go to every Friday and we give them and we'll give them the welcome packet with the rules and guidelines which I you all have a paper in front of you with these two pages that you can look at a closer look so we have the welcoming growing friendships page where it explains how we're so excited for everybody to be a part of this wonderful program and then it also has a list of the guidelines. For example, can you go back? Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> there you go. I got it. For example, Growing Friendships qualifies for NHS hours. We have quite a few NHS members that participate in this program. This is a great opportunity for them to gain a little bit of hours while spending quality time with a new friend. We also have an attendance rule. You can only miss three sessions that are unexcused. And if you miss more than three, we sadly have to find a replacement. This is because these students look forward to their buddy time and it's very important to them. We wanna make sure they're getting a good buddy that's always consistently there. We also have the designated time, 20 minutes, where they're missing their class. This is an excused absence for them. And we try to pick the classes that are elective so they're not missing too much instructional period and so on. And then we also have the guidelines and rules page, which this is a list of rules that our participants, our gen ed students, must follow in order to be a part of this program. If any of these rules are broken, we sadly have to find a replacement for them. This is to uphold a respectful, inclusive, and appropriate environment for everyone. 
<laughs> so my job as the student coordinator is very fun. So like I said earlier, we have the um, back to school day and that is where I sit at the table and I recruit some of my friends or people I know would be good in this program and I just encourage people to sign up and I will keep track of the names that way. I also post flyers around the school. We have posters around the school that have a QR code that takes you to a Google Doc where any student can sign up just putting information like their name, their grade, and what their fourth block is both fall and spring semester. That way it makes it easier for us to know their schedule and to find a good pair for them. I also give input at our meetings for the pairing on gen ed student personalities. I know a lot of these people and these um, students, Ms. Went students, they have certain needs or they have certain personality traits that don't work well with everybody. So I help to find the best gen ed student to match with that special ed student. I organize and deliver information to students. We have a Remind app where I will send announcements and messages to the students if Growing Friendships is canceled that day or if there is an event coming up that we will do, sort of things like that. If we have a student that can no longer be a part of the program, I am responsible for finding a new pair for them. I reach out to people on our wait list, which I also manage, and I will let them know an opening has popped up and they can now join the program. I collect and record the responses for the surveys. I also gave each of you a survey for the uh, special ed teacher and the gen ed student. Um, there's questions on there. These are the exact surveys that we sent out last week, and we're just getting the responses back today. And I think Ms. Wentz is going to share some, some of the really positive responses we've gotten. I also train the future student leader. This program is so wonderful because it is student-led, and we all think that at Rustburg. It, is, it adds a personal touch to it. And so I am currently training a sophomore to take my place once I graduate. She's doing a wonderful job. I picked her. I thought that she would be wonderful at this. And we all agreed on that. Um, I also, we have the senior award ceremony at the end of the year. And everybody that participates, both gen ed and special ed, that participate in this program, they get a cord. And this is a really special thing that I advocated for because the, at the award ceremony, our special ed students don't get as many awards or cords that our gen ed students or our honor students get. And this is such a special moment for them to be recognized for their high school experience. And now Ms. Swomack, the gen ed coordinator, will talk about her part. Hi guys, um, I'm Jamie Womack. Gonna adjust this. Um, I am the SCA sponsor at Rustburg High School. I'm also the Gen Ed coordinator, so I teach English and journalism. Um, and so I essentially have helped Lauren create signups, Google Forms, just kind of putting it together. Um, I check, help her check the students' schedules, make sure there's nothing that could um, become like a problem. For example, if a sophomore wants to participate but they're in driver's ed, they actually cannot miss driver's ed. So that would be something that I would say, hey, that student can't do that. Um, because unfortunately they can't miss their driver's ed classes. Um, so that's one thing that I do. I create the attendance sheet. I also monitor the attendance sheet. So it's my responsibility once um, Ms. Went and Laura and I have found that a student doesn't attend after three times, I contact that student, tell them we regretfully have to let them leave the program that we'll be finding them a replacement. Um, so that's one of my responsibilities. Um, I also give, send out information to staff members, like the general education staff members, um, about growing friendships, our expectations, what to expect from the students, when they should be expected back to class, and when they're allowed to leave, um, and any kind of logistical information that they need. Um, I also meet with Lauren pretty regularly, and um, my new student, who she's training right now, um, I'm going to meet with them or her in the future and we're going to check in. How is it going? What do you need? Is everything going well? That kind of stuff. Um, and then we meet all together as a team to discuss, you know, how are things going? What can we approve upon? And then we can plan events and different things like that for the students all together. I also order the cords for our senior ceremony. Um, 
and just kind of help Lauren with whatever she needs. So, yeah. Hello, I'm Hannah Went. I'm the adaptive curriculum teacher at Restburg. Um, so my primary responsibilities are, I often coordinate with Lauren to talk about at the beginning, what are our needs in the special ed program? So knowing all the students that come in, I see them every day, I'm able to look across our five special ed classes and really determine what the behaviors are that we might see. And Lauren gives me that feedback on the gen ed population, um, what personalities would go well based off of some of our higher need behaviors. So that's a huge part of what feedback I'm able to bring. Um, I plan with Ms. Womack and Lauren and our student leader in training to appropriately pair, pair the students based off of schedules and again those behaviors that we might see. Um, I also am able to monitor with the special ed teachers how it's going. So weekly just checking in on Fridays, we have two groups that go, the morning and the afternoon. And I have kids come in my room who are paired up with my five students. So I'm able to go check in with the other teachers and just see, hey, how's it going? Let me see what you're working on. Um, what activities are your friends doing with their buddies? Um, I'm able to email out the special ed team pretty frequently whenever we have events coming up. Um, if they're not keeping up with their attendance, I'll check in with my special ed teachers to just make sure they're doing that, um, as well as planning additional events. So last year, it was really fun. We did a field day that I had planned at the end of the year for all of our um, buddies that they got to do together. And they also danced in the talent show, so that was really fun. Um, I did want to just share to give you guys a little insight to how special this program is. I wanted to read a survey to you that some of our friends filled out, so bear with me. Okay. So one of our students, this was a baseball player, so really great that we got to have some baseball players do this. He said, I love talking to my buddy and doing everything that he wants to do so I can make his day great. Another student said, I've built great relationships with my buddy and the rest of the class, it has opened my eyes to how other people view the world. I love working with my buddy. I have truly had an amazing experience this year doing this. I have never been more grateful and thankful it has been brought to our school. I feel that I love this program because I've always been told I work well with kids in this area. I love spending time with them and it makes my heart feel full of joy. Every, ever since I started doing this, it's all I look forward to doing. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for us? How many students are participating in this? Around 55 total, gen ed and special ed. Wow. That's great. That's great. Oh, that's great. And when did you start? You may have mentioned it and I missed it. When did it actually start, the program? So I started this program last fall, my junior year. Okay. So not, not this year, next, last year. Wow. So, Something. so is this unique to Rustburg or is this a national program or? This is unique to Rustburg, yes, sir. Some of the guidelines that we have are based off of the Best Buddies program, which is national, but Growing Friendship is Rustburg. And you have to pay for that. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to pay for that, so we don't want to pay. <laughs> how, often do you, how often do you meet? Once a week, every Friday. Yes, so we have a few more things to say. Let, let me ask, what, what was the origin? What, what triggered you to say, I want to do this? <laughs> so if it's okay, I wanted to share that closer to the end. Is that okay? <laughs> I actually did, I did plan on sharing that, yes. Is that? And then can you share, I think you're probably going to show some of the activities. Okay. Yes, sir. So here we have the end of semester celebrations. And this was last year, our very first year having growing friendships. These pictures are so special to me. Um, and in the fall, <laughs> we had a pizza party last winter to finish off our first semester having it. And you can see the students are so excited. One student in particular, can I name him? Is that okay? Okay, so one student in particular, he's holding his hands up because he is so excited and he has such a wonderful personality. I love him. And then we plan to do that soon in a few weeks to finish up the winter semester. And then to the right, we have our spring final um, finale, and that is we had a field day like Miss Went had mentioned. She planned that for us, and it was such a wonderful time. We had so different things like water balloons 
and soccer, football, hula hooping, all, all sorts of fun activities. They just loved it, and we plan to do that again this year. So here is where I will answer Mr. Jones's question, the origin of this club, this program. So my sophomore year, before Growing Friendships has become what it is, I told Ms. Went, I said, I really want to be a special education teacher one day. Can I please learn from you? And of course, she was so welcoming, and she let me come into her room every Friday, and I got to watch her during one of my free periods. And I also, through that, I developed wonderful relationships with her students and the students in the other classes. And it was such a wonderful, unique experience. And the next year, she had, later that year, she had encouraged me to go for SCA as media chair. And I was like, okay, I think I can do this. I think I'll like it. And that's when I met Ms. Womack. And I told Ms. Womack, I really think this would be cool if our school had a buddy program where they can do what I did, when they can hang out with these students like I did. And so that's when it started. Without, I, without the two of them, this wouldn't exist. Ms. Womack helped me with the logistics, and we got it off the ground. And previously, before I had started this program, one of the main reasons why I wanted to start this program, not because I enjoyed it so much, but because I would go to class every day, and my, my peers would ask me, Lauren, why do you go in that class? What, what do you do in there? Who, who are you hanging out with? Like, what do you do? And I realized that because of COVID, COVID hit when I was in eighth grade. And so a whole new flock of students had entered the high school and they had no idea we had adaptive students. We had no idea that we had this population in our school. And I told them, I was like, these students, they're a lot of fun to hang out with. And they had no idea because the regulated class sizes, they no longer could go to elective classes like art, band, theater, wood shop, those type of classes, they didn't go to them anymore. And so that's one of the things I told Ms. Womack. I was like, Ms. Womack, they don't, we need to have this program. This would be so much fun to get the inclusiveness back in our school. And so that's what we did. And now we have these end of the school, end of the semester events. As you can see, we have a bunch of students playing with chalk and doing these sort of activities. And it's so much fun. And the students love it, both gen ed and special ed. I even have students, gen ed students, come to me and they say, Lauren, after doing Growing Friendships, I think I want to teach special ed one day. I think I want to work with this population professionally. I want to pursue this. And, <laughs> and that's, that's, such a, that's such a joy to hear that this has impacted more than one people group. And so the other thing that I wanted to say was that this has brought not just inclusiveness, but inclusiveness between gen ed and special ed, it's brought inclusiveness between just gen ed. We have state champion athletes, we have NHS leadership members, we have very talented band and theater members, we have students of all kinds within just the gen ed population that are now friends and they never would have been before that. This has truly brought a different level of inclusiveness to Rustburg High School, and it's so wonderful to see. And these students, they interact with everybody in the hallway, and they're more involved. And I even have, I had one student, I shared this with Dr. Shields the other day. I had one of the special ed students tell me the other day. She said, yeah, I used to get bullied at my old school. She went to a different school before this year at Rustburg. Yeah, people were just really mean to me. No one really liked me. I just, I, I just felt really alone and, and hated. And I said, well, how's Rustburg? Is it a little bit better? And she said, much better. Her eyes got all big. She was like, it's wonderful here. Everyone's nice to me. I feel loved and I have so many friends. And it was just so wonderful to hear. And it's because she has two brand new friends every week come see her for growing friendships. And it's such a wonderful experience. So that, to answer your question, Mr. Jones, that is why I started Growing Friendships because we used to have this people group who used to be isolated because of COVID and whatever their other reasons there were, but now this people group that was isolated is now being celebrated. 
and different personality traits and talents are being celebrated. And there's a different level of kindness and community and inclusiveness at Rustburg High School. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones, for inviting us to talk. And thank you all for giving us the opportunity to present what we love, growing friendships, to you all. Lauren, can I say on behalf of everybody, we want to thank you for your, for your leadership and for your initiative and for your compassion, all, all ingredients of a great teacher. And I want to thank Dr. Shields and the staff at Rustburg High School for creating a, a culture in which our students can flourish uh, the way it's intended to happen. So, so thank you to everybody. And thank you for being here tonight. You did great. Thank you so much. Let, let's, let's, thank, let's thank the Kirby's right there. They created, they created this. Thank you for sharing your, do your daughters, both of them, with us. That's right. Yeah. Very, very impressive. Very I think impressive. you're guaranteed a this, job. This all... <laughs> yeah. That's what we, uh, I yeah. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. We don't give them any standing Thank <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> we can look to kind of spread that along throughout the schools in Camel County. I think it's, it's a wonderful thing you do. All of you do. Thank you so much. Okay. Next item up is we have Brookville High School renovation project presentation. Mr. B. Craft and company. <laughs> so refreshing to, I told you. to hear good news like what we just heard. It seemed like the bad news generally makes makes all the press. So <laughs> that's just great, isn't it? Absolutely. Super, super. That's wonderful. Very good. So uh, my name's Ken B. Craft. I'm with Blair Construction. And the last time I believe I got to be before the entire board, we uh, went over some ideals and thoughts and uh, of what could happen at Brookville High School. And uh, you guys have had entrusted us to take the next step. We, we did an interim agreement and we've been working hard. I say we, at Blair Construction and Spectrum, Architectural uh, and Engineering. Uh, we've been working hard over the last five or six months. We've been interviewing all the staff, uh, department heads, uh, We've been uh, meeting with VDOT. We've been meeting with Campbell County USA, uh, the fire marshal, the building official. So a whole lot has happened and we're almost ready to get started. Uh, last Tuesday at the Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, the Board of Supervisors approved our comprehensive agreement, which is the overall total, here it is, get started and get going. So we're, we're that close to getting started. I mean, literally, uh, within a month, we're we're ready to get started. I've been working a whole lot with Principal Miss Miss White there at Brookville High School, and she's she and her staff have been great to work with, uh, very accommodating. We've had a lot of people in and out of the school, so again, I think we're ready ready to get going, and we're super excited about about this. Uh, one interesting note: I didn't realize it at the time, but in two years from now, about when we get this thing finished, will be my 50th class reunion. So uh, at Brookville High School, so, so I'm like, wow, a little bit of pressure. So, uh, but, uh, so I have uh, Nathan Harper and Taylor Terrell with me from Spectrum, and they're going to go into uh, a little more of what you've seen, a little bit more detail. And uh, so I'll let Nathan uh, get started. Sounds good. Again, I'm Nathan Harper with Spectrum Design. Uh, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to be here today, and we're extremely excited about this project. Um, what we're going to do is just kind of give you a high-level overview of what we've been doing and where we're going next. And uh, before we do so, just to kind of acclimate you uh, and to the audience here, um, what you'll see here is kind of an aerial view of the school, and you notice these pieces in orange. Um, and basically, the strategy for renovating the school is to add and expand that a piece at the front entry that you see there, and, uh, and also to add a element on the back right corner that you see uh, there, which is a, uh, an auxiliary gym. And the reason we need that is because we're actually taking 
the current auxiliary gym and turning it into uh, a new commons community space uh, for, for student gathering. So, let's see if I can figure this thing out. Wait down. Any new batteries? Yeah. Sure. Well, Thank you. Come up and run I'll just. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay. So uh, this is where we uh, where we were um, several months back, and uh, you can see that really we had developed a, a pretty thorough plan. Um, I show you this right now just to basically uh, to demonstrate to you that this has been a very linear development process. Things have changed from this, but not a whole lot. Uh, Really what we've been doing is cultivating and fine tuning and really making sure that all this is workable and buildable um, so that Ken and his team uh, can take it, take it from there. Um, what you'll notice here is uh, kind of that new front entry piece I talked about, which is um, right next to the uh, auditorium. We'll be renovating the auditorium, building a new administrative uh, guidance or, or counseling kind of suite there up front. We're going to rework the library a little bit and, and shuffle some things around there. Uh, the, the academic part of the wing will be uh, completely renovated and updated. We're going to be introducing some new uh, skylights in, in those areas to bring some more daylight in, adding windows throughout, et cetera. Uh, and then you'll see that big, uh, the, there's kind of a large piece right in the center of the plan, um, which kind of sits between the arts wing and the, uh, the main gymnasium and the auditorium, that really becomes that student commons dining space. So it's really kind of a giving, we, we talked about it I think early on as giving the school a heart. Uh, the, school, the school really needs a center and this is gonna become that center. Um, and uh, Taylor's gonna talk a little bit more about some of the detail around that. And then that also with it, there's a large open stair that will connect down to the lower level. Uh, so that will make that lower level not feel like the basement, but rather really tie all this together. So in the end, the goal is to, uh, for the school is really going to feel like a new school. That's, that's what we're, we're after here. All right, next. And so um, as Ken mentioned, we've had many, many meetings. Uh, this just shows you a few, few photos from some of those meetings, but it's been so great uh, getting to know uh, the, the team at the school and everyone's just been extremely accommodating uh, throughout, but it's been very valuable to the design team to be able to, uh, to get our arms around the vision and the needs and to really translate that into, uh, into the work that we're here to show you today. And with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Taylor to take it from there. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, again, my name is Taylor Terrell. I'm a project architect on the design team of a Spectrum. Uh, you can just go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, so as Nathan was saying, um, this floor plan, this is the first floor, uh, you know, it doesn't look that drastically different from those colored images you saw earlier, but we've just been refining that. Um, really, uh, so as Ken was saying, you know, kicking off construction at the start of the year, what does that look like? We're obviously not renovating the whole school at, this, at one time. We're going to be doing this in phases. So we've been really focusing on, as Nathan was saying, the heart of the school, so that new commons cafeteria space and then uh, the new auxiliary addition in the rear of the school and making sure those are ready to go so they can kick off in January and then we'll gradually work our way out of the building and into the academic area as time progresses uh, and time for this reunion. So, uh, <laughs> we can go to the next slide. So the biggest piece uh, is, is basically captured in this slide. Uh, you'll see, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Brookville High School, uh, the old auxiliary gym becomes our new heart, the cafeteria, common space, uh, and then uh, we bring uh, a new kitchen space, our auxiliary gym in the rear, uh, new locker rooms in the lower level. Um, you're, you're really not going to recognize this level of the floor uh, of the school uh, once, we're, once we're done with it, and it's kind of exciting because this is one of the first areas you'll see uh, new things happening. You can go to the next one. Uh, it's kind of giving you a blow up of, uh, this is the kitchen space. Uh, so on, on, on your left, uh, that's opening up to the cafeteria. We have new four new serving lines. We're working with a kitchen consultant uh, to really make sure you guys have a nice modern kitchen that's adaptable uh, for when the school opens, but hopefully for another 50 years as well. Uh, you know, large walk-in freezers and coolers accommodating um, all the USDA products and uh, 
this is really uh, meeting with your, your, your staff and making sure uh, you're all set and ready to go. Um, next. In the rear, uh, again, just a blow up of the auxiliary gym. Uh, so like most schools giving you an ample amount of storage, uh, I feel like that was always the common comment of we don't have enough storage. Uh, and so hopefully giving uh, your, your athletic uh, teams uh, actual places to put uh, their equipment as well as people having some spaces spread out. Uh, so new weight room, uh, auxiliary gym, uh, set up so that you can actually use it, not just for during the day for classes, but also set up for parks and rec uh, with some bleachers, and also you can use it for uh, competition. So both gyms uh, can have spectator seating as well. So as a reference point, that new footprint there, the new gym is, is actually gonna take the place of the first two tennis courts closing. And then we're adding a new tennis court closer to Tomahawk. So, uh, so it will be a, a limited tennis season next year while we're building this and getting, getting the new tennis court built. But everybody's been willing to realize it's going to be a little bit of pain and stretching. So it's, 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 I think it's going to be worth it. I'm sorry, Taylor. No, no, you're good. Thank you. You can go to the next one. So uh, just an overview, these are elevations of all the, the main uh, four sides of the school. Um, you know, our hope and goal of, the, of our project is uh, really just to, to breathe new life into this school, uh, to breathe uh, daylight. Uh, you know, again, a big concern was uh, there are windows, but there are very few, and uh, we wanted to help that. So on all our elevations, you know, we took advantage of that. We tried to punch as many openings as we could, add natural daylighting into those classrooms around the perimeter. As Nathan talked about, you know, later we're going to be adding skylights in the hallways, um, as well as, uh, you know, modernizing the material palette. So you know, we're bringing some uh, metal panels, uh, a new accent brick color, uh, just to, to give the building a, a refreshed look. Um, and if you go ahead in the next one, you kind of see what that looks like uh, up close. Uh, so this is the latest rendering um, of the front entry. Sorry, it looks a little washed out on screen. Uh, but um, so this is showing that new academic, uh, not academic, the admin edition at the front of the building. Um, and the goal here was really the school itself is kind of low. Uh, and, you know, it kind of sits down in the, in the, in the valley, um, you know, from... Uh, Timberlake, you actually just see the roof of it. Uh, you don't really see the school. And so the goal of this new entry uh, was not only to have a modern and fresh look, but to really give it some height, um, some visual prominence, uh, you know, to distinguish itself on, on Laxton Road. Uh, the, the, this is Brookville. So, you know, some large signage, um, some school spirit, uh, and really just expanding that front area to create a space for gathering. You know, we were right at the auditorium. Um, you, you can imagine coming out of the high school band concert. Right now, you're kind of shoved out into the parking lot. Uh, but actually, you can imagine coming out and actually you know, waiting for your kid after school or um, just giving some space for the community in the front of the school as well. You the next. Um, so this is if you just kept turning. Uh, so this would be if you were looking at the current cafeteria uh, where we're introducing a new fine arts wing. So you'll see here, the biggest thing is, you know, what does it look like to add metal panels, uh, new windows, uh, this lighter brick color. Again, all these are uh, introductions to help uh, just lighten the facade. Uh, again, re refresh it, breathe new life. Um, you know, we're not getting rid of that, the large mechanical screen, but we will be repainting it. Uh, again, a brighter color, uh, just to, again, to um, breathe new life to the building. So working your way around to the rear of the building, uh, you can kind of see in the back of that image, that is the existing entry into the gymnasium. And this is our new uh, auxiliary gym and weight room. Uh, so this is kind of the perspective if you were standing on the track or kind of in the stands looking back towards the building. Um, I think this is a really exciting image of um, one just, uh, a new modern front to the building and you can imagine uh, we have the weight room up front we have these large overhead doors that can be opened up so you know team football team practice in the afternoon they can go easily from training inside to go out into the field pretty effort effortlessly um, again we're right next to the tennis courts we have new storage large storage spaces right next to the athletic complex um, 
for that proximity. Uh, we have, you kind of see it here, this large, uh, I call it a sunshade screen wall, uh, is one, shading the, the weight room of all that glazing, but also it's a cool idea for, again, some Brookville uh, signage and school spirit, you know, since we're right there as coming in for uh, all your, your stadium games. Uh, just, again, a, a great way to celebrate Brookville. Um, so that takes us to the auxiliary gym. Some of the things we've been working through uh, with faculty and staff uh, these past couple months is we presented a finish palette. So these are, this is the board of the interior finishes. Uh, and you can kind of see where we're going. Uh, we have, you know, uh, shades of grays and neutrals mixed with warm woods, uh, some fun uh, hexagon tiles to play off the bees uh, that you kind of see in just some, some fun places, maybe like behind a water cooler or an accent wall. Um, and then uh, some yellows and, or golds and maroons as well. So what does that look like translated into the building itself? Uh, so this image right here, that would be standing down in the new commons cafeteria, looking up the, the large monumental learning stair. Um, so you see where we're interested in, you know, overall the building still feels pretty neutral, but we'll have, you know, those pops of gold and, and maroon throughout uh, with the warmth tone of the wood balancing with the existing uh, brick that's throughout the building. So uh, like Ken's saying, what have we been doing? Uh, since then, uh, we have just been developing uh, technical documents, getting ready uh, for phase one and phase two at the start of the year. Uh, just coming around uh, to home base with um, you know, building sections and details and coordination with MEP and kitchen consultants and uh, making sure that we covered our, your programming document and make sure we checked all the boxes. So that's where we're at today. Uh, do you guys have any immediate questions? Or? Reemphasize that outdoor learning area. I think a lot yeah. of people were uh, pretty excited about that, and I mm -hmm. think that, as Taylor's saying, that's comes in a later phase. So I haven't been pushing him as hard on getting all that nailed down yet. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> later, but I think everybody was really excited about what that potential had. Right. So phase one and phase two are athletic heavy, so we can move everyone out of that auxiliary gym and into you know we can transition those spaces. The rest of the phases are pretty academic heavy, and so like. Nathan was saying, um, you know, the academic core, you know, there are some perimeter classrooms that have access to natural daylighting or out the window, um, but a lot don't. So how do we solve that? Uh, it is in the development uh, behind the school where the greenhouse is. It's really kind of an under underutilized space right now. We, we see that as a new outdoor learning area, so kind of terracing that, uh, having a place for seating. You can imagine someone bringing out you know, their English class and, you know, presenting uh, a poetry they wrote, or maybe a chemistry class coming out <coughs> and using it to do an experiment. Um, so really, it gives everyone an opportunity, and for those that maybe don't have direct access to the outside, the ability to have an alternate teaching environment. And this is, this is in the area over by the greenhouse, if you're familiar with that area. There's also some security issues with that space right now, and that it's not well contained, and so by you know, really fencing that in in an, in an appropriate way, yeah. we can address that. It, it's sort of a two for one, if you will. But I, we re do really think it'll be a, a wonderful, um, op, you know, option for teachers and for students to to gather out there. Yeah. So, um, still on budget. Still on budget. Right. And, and, and and time frame. Uh, ending time frame. As long as we can get everything we need in this room. <laughs> and so, what are we going to We hate for you to miss that. <laughs> so, when are you scheduled to break ground? January? Uh -oh. January. Are you not going to do any over Christmas break? We actually are going to do, uh, in working with the staff, there's two rooms that will eventually become health rooms that are currently where the trainer and, and a couple of the locker rooms are. Those would eventually be health rooms. But when Miss White agreed to give us the rest of that downstairs area after basketball season, uh, which includes taking away the two PE locker rooms, she said, I'll need a place to have PE uh, for the uh, March, April, and May. 
So we're going to get those two health rooms. We're actually going to start uh, over Christmas break. Okay. And, uh, and getting those two rooms, try to get those done. So, mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've been helping Miss uh, Piot move her training facility over into the old coaches area. So uh, everybody, again, everybody is super excited and everybody's been uh, just so cooperative. So, uh, yep, yeah, we've, we've got a pretty heavy, heavy duty phase in the plan that uh, it's, again, it's going to be a little painful, but I think it's, I think we can work it. So, yeah. so what do you think is the hardest part about this project? Or do you give you the, the hardest part? I think we probably have this, I, our, answer, our answer to that would probably be just the, the phasing, the moving the parts and pieces of all this, because the building still has to function yeah. and be occupied. And so uh, just how to work and compartmentalize within that and the shifting of all the, the, the we're, puzzle pieces we're actually as you go. going to have what we call swing space available. We're going to take a hall at a time, like 10 classrooms. And we're going to have space over where there's, like once the, once the current cafeteria moves downstairs into this new really cool space, We'll, put, we'll probably end up building some temporary classrooms there. And then when the next hall moves, we'll do that. And then this space will end up at the end, it'll become it, the arts, the arts wing. Arts is currently over with the band and choir. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a maze of how, we, yeah. how we've done it. And it'll, it'll be a, an ongoing uh, process of, of tweaking the plan, so to speak. And I would say, you know, we have to constantly make sure that, our, one, our kids are safe. Right. That's always something that we got to keep around. And then, two, that kids are learning. You know, the, we still try to focus on instruction, you know, with, they've, with, the, with the chaos going on around them. Absolutely. And I, and I will say from our perspective that the collaboration between Blair and Spectrum has been fantastic. And, and with you all as well, I mean, it's just been, it's so much easier to go through this process and we can move so much faster when everyone's working together, and uh, they've just been extremely accommodating um, throughout. So I really, you know, we're really grateful um, for that, and we appreciate the opportunity to, to be a part of a team where everybody's pulling together and, and you know, doing what they need to do to make this happen. We've identified modular storage units that we'll be putting out on the remote parts of the parking lot for, you know, things that just have to be stored away while, while, we're, while we're working. So uh, a whole lot of thought Are you going to have a material staging area, like yes, for your yes, that, your uh, beams and yeah, the, the central. I mean, the senior parking lot up on the upper end towards Timberlake. Uh, we're after the school year. I think we're being told that we can we can have that whole senior parking lot, and that'll that'll be a good isolation from the yeah. kids down on the mm -hmm. other end and. Uh, we won't be having deliveries going through, you know, around other the kids and parking, and so uh, I, I think we've got an okay plan. Can you get the doors on order? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 the doors have always been on order. They're still, they're still on order. Just getting them here. He ordered those sorry. before he that's finalized the plans. That's an inside, <laughs> inside joke. But that was wrong. No, so, uh, <laughs> So you guys, I, you may have said I missed it, but you're going to start on the new gym first, and that'll allow you to move, <coughs> you know, work on that existing gym once the new gym is done, and that'll well, kind of be phase two when you well, move in. Well, actually, we're going to start on the new gym, the new footprint, and next month. And yeah. after basketball season, we're going to take the old gym. Okay. And that's about the time that you switch into spring sports. So. They don't need that auxiliary gym for basketball and some of the things that they use that for. That'll be going kind of going out to the field house and to the outdoor stadium there. So we'll actually be able to do a whole lot of work before we finish the new, you know, the new auxiliary gym. So uh, we're putting the weight room that's going to become locker rooms in the wrestling, in the current wrestling room. I'm, I'm friends with the wrestling coach now. <laughs> he, he doesn't think that's terrible. So. Trying to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. That's right. Yes.
we really are excited about it and working with you guys. So, well, thank you all. It's been looking forward to it. Been exciting so far, and we're uh, looking forward to seeing. I got excited when the drilling rig was out there on the tennis court, so it'll be real exciting when we get some heavier equipment out there and start. <laughs> these guys start tearing it up. So, <laughs> good deal. Any other questions? Thank y'all very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Madison, the floor. Do we have anyone signed up to speak tonight? No, sir. No. Hey, okay. Where is the Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next item up, approval of the November 13th, 2023 meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes of the November 13th, 2023 me meeting. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Brandt and a second by Mr. Phillips. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Payment of bills. Mr. Chairman, I reviewed those bills and uh, make a motion to approve payment. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Miller and a second by Mr. Jones. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Acceptance of donations. Ms. McClanahan. Tonight you have 13 donations listed in advance of the meeting on board docs. Unless you have any questions, I ask that you approve them as presented. Motion. motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Maddox and a second by Ms. Parker. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Consideration of non-resident tuition. Ms. McClanahan again. Tonight you have a list of students being approved for uh, non-resident attendance. Unless you have any questions, please present, uh, approve those as presented. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Brandt and a second by Mr. Maddox. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Request for supplemental appropriations. Tonight you have four appropriations listed on board docs. Unless you have any questions, I ask that you approve those. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Phillips and a second by Mr. Jones. Is there any further discussion? I just have a question about the second one for the all in Virginia. I take that was the all in Virginia. That's allocated over three years. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So we have all the money right now. Yes, we'll receive all of the money this year and then we'll carry over what's not spent this year for 25 and 26. Okay. Are we dividing it in thirds or do we have, we probably have some startup costs and Yes, the first year is heavier on the expenses, and then the second and third year uh, is slightly less. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Personnel report. Ms. Hundley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. You have the personnel report in front of you. Um, I'm happy to report that if you remember the beginning of the school year, um, I let you know that we had several late summer resignations that we weren't able to fill at the beginning of the school year, but we were hopeful that we'd be able to fill it after the fall semester with student teachers, and we were. Um, three of those got filled, two actually at Alta Vista combined, where Ms. Anderson let me know she was able to um, add several elective options into her schedule for second semester. So that worked out. Um, so we're down to three openings. Um, two of those, ironically, are special ed teachers, Lauren. So it's a little early, but in a couple of years, you make sure you give me a call. Um, so we are down to those three certified positions and still right at 10 classified positions. Um, most of those are custodians and special ed assistants. And then Dr. Ranella let me know that he's still short five full-time and four part-time drivers. So he's working on it. But if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, I'd ask that you approve it as written. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Jones and a second by Dr. Miller. Is there any further discussion? 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Heimel. Statement of economic interest, Ms. McClanahan. Just, we posted the form that's always uh, for completion in January and also gave you a copy. Just remember they're due by February 1st of 24. <coughs> May I get yours in? Yeah, yeah. you're going to take mine and take care of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Truancy update, Mr. Abbott, Mr. Sis. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, I, I wanted to come up and just give you a brief update. Dr. Stanley asked if we'd come and talk to everybody about our attendance processes and where we're at with student attendance for this school year. And so we, we put together a small program, if it'll pop up here. That's not it. That's way more happy. I don't think you can do this as good as <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, why did they put me third after these? you got new buildings and great kids, and here we are with, the, with truancy. So nothing like being last. So I'm going to talk about some, uh, at first, just some legal basis for um, truancy issues and attendance. I'm doing exactly what they did. What are we doing? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, uh, so basically, <coughs> as we all know, the law requires that all students <coughs> in Virginia attend school. Uh, any, anybody of school age, which is five to 17, the compulsory attendance law requires that all students attend school, whether that be parochial school, um, private school, um, public school, or home school, or some other form. There's a few other forms, but mostly those are the ones. And those are the requirements. Also, the compulsory attendance law requires that all guardians, I believe it says parents, guardians, or other persons in the Commonwealth having control over a child are the persons responsible for ensuring that child attends one of those schools. And we wanted to say, we do the school, they got the kids to bring them to school, and that's what we want. We want to have a partnership between us and the parents, and the number one thing to get kids to school is to have a robust program. I think the things you're seeing tonight, and we'll talk a little bit about that, are the climate that we've got with our students and the climate and the, the feeling we have inside our schools in Campbell County uh, has been and will continue to be positive, uh, professional, and um, safe. And that's our, our, and supportive. Those are our biggest reasons we want, that kids will want to come to school. A couple of uh, definitions. I want to go over, I get the boring stuff, and then uh, uh, everybody else is going to talk about its procedurals. Absent and present at school. So absent at school means you're physically not there during the school day at all. You're just, you're not at school at all. Present is you are physically present at some point during the school day. If you're a homebound student, medical homebound student, you are attending your homebound services that are being provided physically there. Um, there's two kinds of absences. There's an excused absence and an unexcused absence. A student who has a medical condition would have an excused absence. Religious holiday, excused absence. Uh, a pre-approved absence by a principal could be an approved absence. A suspension from school is an approved, excused absence. Uh, unexcused absences are absences that are not approved by the school administration. And those are any other case that has not been pre-approved. So, those two make a big difference when it comes to truancy. Truancy. Any student that misses more than six absences in a year that's unexcused is considered truant. That's unexcused absences. They can have more absences. Parents might take a, a family on a vacation and they miss some days and then the kid's sick for a few days. That does not mean that student is truant. Those have been excused absences. The student is not truant. Next one. Chronically absent, however. So chronically absent is where we get, uh, we get looked at as a division for accreditation. Our chronic absenteeism rates, it does not matter whether a student is approved absence, excused absence, unexcused absence. It's just the total number of days that a student misses from school. 
So any student who misses more than 10% of a school year, we have 180 days, it's 18 days a year. Any student that exceeds 18 days from school in a school year is considered chronically absent. When you look at that and divide that by the number of months we have, it's incredibly, it's two days a month, basically, that a student can be absent from school, and they're going to be considered chronically absent. And that's where it sneaks up on people and gets them. So it seems like a small thing to miss a day here, a day here, a day there. But what we find is it breaks down to about a little under two days per month, and you can start being chronically absent from school. You, every one of those might be somehow excused, but it doesn't matter. You're missing school, and our, um, our accreditation is based upon that. And so, go ahead. That's my next slide. So, you, you miss more than 10% of the school year, you are chronically absent, and you are not truant. Just because you're chronically absent might mean all those are excused and you're not truant, but you're still getting counted against us in our, in our uh, accreditation counts. Slide, please. Here's some of the stuff we do. I wanted to put up some of the things we do as a school system to help families. First off, we notify them of their responsibilities. We're very clear at the beginning of the year what's required of us, what's required of them. Um, I think we provide a safe learning environment for our kids and we make them feel safe. Uh, we bring kids to school every day. And I don't know what it costs uh, Dr. Ronella to bring kids to school, but it's ex it has a lot of money placed in the program to bring kids to school safely. Uh, it's a robust program. We've got people on the roads all day long, bringing kids to all the different programs they have. Um, there's an awful lot of kids on the road at all times. Um, our program of studies is robust. It's a challenge to students. I think you can see how our students exceed after school, after high school level, how our program of studies is working to help students. One of the things that we do, we have counseling and, and uh, mental health assistance to students throughout the school day. That's stuff that has become way more robust over the years than it ever was in the past. Certainly if you go back to when we were in high school, I'm not sure I ever spoke to a counselor at school except to get my uh, schedule, but that is not the way it is now. Uh, counselors and our school social workers, our school psychologists, and everyone else are working to make sure they touch base with students for interpersonal issues they have with other students, things that are keeping them from school and making them feel uncomfortable to be at school and also driving home the fact that they do need to be at school. Just as was said over here, you, you saw this program that was being put on by a young person in our schools and that is not unique to one place. We have amazing programs going on throughout the schools, extracurricular events, clubs, activities, groups that meet, student groups that meet, kids that go out of their way to help other young kids and make people feel welcome. It's amazing what we do in our schools, and I'm, I can't imagine not wanting to come to school in Camel County if I was a resident here. It's so much more robust than when I went to school. Back then, it was just you had really, if you didn't play sports, that was pretty much it. There's just so much that could touch the lives of you, of all these kids who um, might not be into sports or into other things. And... Um, I can't imagine a student in one of our schools that can't find a place in a, a peer group to be in that's a positive place. And lastly, for students who are, families who are struggling, we provide the ITRT process. And Mr. Abbott's gonna come up and he's gonna talk about the specifics of how we track truancy, and he's gonna talk about the ITRT process and the members who are on, on that board. Hey, Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Siss. Mr. Chairman, board members, I just want to take a few minutes and talk to you about the procedures that we use when a student is truant in our schools. Um, first and foremost, we send letters home to parents. These letters are sent after a student has missed three days unexcused, five days unexcused, or has a total of 10 total absences. The 10 total absences signifies that from that point on the rest of the school year, parents are required to have doctor notes in order to have an excused absence. So we will give up to first two weeks that a kid has missed school, 
will take notes from home, but following 10 total days, whenever that may occur, we require doctor notes from then on. And that tries to keep in line, um, as Mr. Sis said, we only have 18 days and a kid is true, chronically absent. Um, so we allow 10, we only have eight days left um, after that. When the five-day unexcused letter goes home, each individual school completes an attendance plan with the student and the parent. Um, that is done a day or two after the five-day letter is sent home. If a student has another unexcused absence following the five-day letter, we would get a referral, Mr. Burnett, myself in our office. We would make a contact with the parent. Um, if it's a secondary student, we may have a contact with that student. And we just reinforce what has already been said about truancy in the process, try to find out reasons for unexcused absences. We will talk to the student about their grades and their behavior because we look at all three factors when CORE gets involved. Following the parent contact by our office, if they have another unexcused absence, that triggers an ITRT meeting. And in just a second, I'm gonna explain that in a little bit more detail. Um, if a student continues to miss following an ITRT meeting, they are then, I refer them to court service unit, J&D court service unit. They would either be placed in a diversion program or a charge would be filed against the parent if it's an elementary school student, anyone under the age of 13, or against the student if they're over the age of 13. Regarding the ITRT, that is an interagency truancy review team that was put together, um, recommended statewide per codes of Virginia about three years ago, right around the time, right, might have been right before COVID. Um, the team meets every other week, typically. Occasionally, we may meet three times in a month. And we meet with the parent, and if a student is a middle or high school student, we meet with the student. Elementary, we do not. And we do that to discuss student needs, to find out what's preventing the student from having good attendance. Are there health issues, uh, mental health issues, um, anything else that the family may bring up? And in addition to school personnel, Mr. Burnett, myself, is on the committee. We have school su support personnel, a uh, member of the Department of Social Services, a uh, member of the Department of Criminal Justice, which is Court Service Unit. We have Campbell County Office of Children's <coughs> Services, Horizon Behavioral Health Services, and Parents and Guardians. This meeting is very similar to the school attendance plan, with the exception of we have a lot more parties involved and we have the ability to offer more services um, through Horizon can become involved. Um, we can recommend students for day treatment that is involved or offered in our schools. So it allows us to do a little bit more digging and a little bit more services to try to prevent um, chronic absenteeism or truancy from going on to court. The final slide that I'm gonna talk about, I wanted to give you some data uh, regarding our attendance, and thanks to the technology department, um, we couldn't pull this data up easily without their, their help and assistance. We look at data currently this year, I'm looking at it in three different ways. First is the attendance percentage, and that is basically the percent of attendance for ADM, students that are on our roll. Second, Category is the number of students who at that point have missed 10% of school. So that's actual bodies. And the third category is chronic absentee percentage. So if you look at this current school year, at the end of each month, I've started running these reports. Um, at the end of November for this current school year, we had a <coughs> percentage of 94.92. Compare that to last year at 93.41. So we're about a point and a half higher than last year. Number of students who had missed 10% of school at the end of November was just over 1,250. Last year at this time, we were almost 1,800. 
So that's almost slight, just slightly 50% decrease. Um, no, not quite a 50% decrease, um, about a 35% decrease. Chronic absentee numbers this year is a 16.1 compared to last year at the end of November, we were 23.36, so that's over a 7%. So we've really made some strides um, getting our numbers down, getting our actual number of students who have missed 10%. Um, the schools have done a wonderful job on that. The last thing I wanted to show you regarding data is, because I'm sure a question is, well, how were we prior to COVID? What was our chronic absentee numbers prior to COVID? And the chronic absentee is what is part of our accreditation. So for 18, 19, 19, 20, it's kind of ironic, they were exactly the same. Um, you can compare that to the state average, we were below the state average. 2021 is a unique year that was with COVID. Um, a lot of virtual kids, so uh, that really improved our attendance. 21-22, um, we took a big hit. We were 16.5. State average was at 20%. Uh, we did start to make a little bit of a dent in it last year at 15.1 compared to the Virginia of 19. I do anticipate this year if things proceed um, like they have compared to last year, we ought to see a couple percentage points drop by the end of the year. Um, so if we could get as an average in Campbell County, 12, 13, that would be great. Um, still reaping the benefits, or not the benefits, the cost of COVID. It takes about three or four years to get this process, in my opinion, turned around. The procedures that I talked to you about previously is something Campbell County has done over the past five to six years, seven years. We've tweaked them a little bit every year to find certain things that work a little bit better. Um, but when I started this job in 2012, we had some schools that were pretty high absenteeism, um, but, put, but, but by putting this process in place, we've really gotten their numbers down. You know, as in 18, 19, we had a really good attendance. And I think another couple of years we'll get back there. And at this point, Dr. Hale's going to be. What, what's going to be a number where you're going to be? We, we've done a great job. Uh, we got to get back to nine percent. <laughs> I mean, before COVID, and then, you know, I think before we're satisfied, and we're not satisfied then. How many have you taken the court? Last year, I had 34 different students in court. Of those 34 students, there were a total of 44 court charges because you can have multiple court charges on one student. Currently this year, there are 24 students I have in court or have been in the court process this year. And I think there's been six additional charges, so a total of about 30. Um, some of those 24 are carryovers. When you take a student to court, it's not a once and done. Typically you go to court, um, some kids I've been in in court seven, eight times over the course of a year, two years. Um, court does work for 90 some percent of our students though. So how, how big a difference between elementary school, middle school and high school or the numbers sort of similar? It varies. Prior to COVID and when I first started this, Typically, our elementary schools had our best attendance, mm -hmm. and our high schools had the worst. We have um, one of our high schools that's one of our top in attendance right now. Um, some of our elementaries are at the bottom. And um, post-COVID, we're fighting the battle with doctor offices of telling parents if your kid's sick, keep them at home. You don't need to come see me. And uh, that's still an issue, and I think it's a bigger issue with the elementary. Hence, their attendance has probably declined a little bit. You see that a little bit more in elementary schools. Because when kids first start in kindergarten, that's when they're going to be the most sick.
Napper send members of the board. The last um, little bit of information we wanted to share with you is regarding what our school's doing to be proactive, as well as what are we doing as far as communication. So we have a variety of attendance incentives, and this was prior to any of the talk of all in Virginia. Um, these conversations started over the summer. So our schools do a variety of attendance incentives, including things like ice cream parties, pizza parties, donuts, um, and then really recognizing um, students who are having good attendance um, with different gift cards that have been donated from the community. Um, now we have additional funds with the All in Virginia money to help support that work. Um, and then also that recognition um, for students, whether that's at a pep rally at the high school level or if it's a recognition on the announcements. If you come to the Technical Center on Fridays, you'll get, a, get to hear a shout out um, because we know that coming to work is one of the most important things that we can help our students understand for them to be prepared for when they graduate and leave us. So that is one thing that has been um, great to be able to support additionally with this funding and all in Virginia. The other piece that we do is we have tried to increase our communication. One thing during COVID is we did encourage families to stay home when they were sick, right? That was our message. So we've really been trying to encourage, when do I need to send my kid to school? How can I facilitate that com conversation? And we have different um, letters that we send out. One was just sent out from the entire division thanking everyone for their attendance. We have made major strides this year already um, with our attendance. We are finding that there's a lot of sickness right now um, legitimately, um, so we do see some of that. We also have different handouts that come um, through the school level to encourage parents, families to, to reach out um, if they have something going on so the school can support them. There is information about the ITRT process itself, um, as well as other services through Horizon. And then also, what does the actual Code of Virginia say, you know, to help our families understand that. We've also added texting as an opt-in feature. So some of you may have benefited from adding that to, so you can receive texting as updates. We know that getting information quickly to families matters, and many families respond through text message. Um, so we are trying to look at some of our practices and how we can help with that. At the end of the day, what's most important is that relationship at the school level. Um, that is what encourages students to come to school, just like Lauren shared at Rustburg High School and how that has been such a beneficial program. Um, I have personally heard students say how powerful that is for them um, and for their the parents for their children. But we really have to continue that and also understand that the ITRT process is about helping families and students. It provides access to supports because sometimes families need more. They need more help than what they have. And so understanding that it is a complicated process. We want our families that need to be there to get to that ITRT process. And kudos to the administrators because they have really set a bar every week of I'm going to continue to monitor attendance and I'm going to be working <coughs> with those families. Um, so in short, attendance, it's a, it's a long process. It's an important one. But we also understand that this will, will take some time and we are proud of the efforts that we're making. Now, any other questions that you might have for myself or Mr. Abbott or Mr. Sisk? Good job. Appreciate all you guys do. Well, I, I have sure. a question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that this is a national problem and a state problem and a Campbell County problem. What, what would you say are the biggest drivers in Campbell County? For students missing school? Yeah, parental responsibility, sickness, transportation, um, it's a variety, but we see more. Tomorrow we have ITRT meeting. We will start at 9 o'clock and go to about 3 o'clock meeting a different family every 20 minutes. And mental health has become probably the number one reason that we hear. Kids or, or family? Kids. 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 That they don't want to come to school because um, depression, anxiety, um, don't like functioning around large groups of people. Um, we hear a lot of that. Prior to COVID, we did not hear very seldom mental health. You always have people that I don't want to come to school. I want to refuse. You know, charge me, do whatever you have to do. That's a small percentage. Um, the larger percentage is just, it's habit forming, mm -hmm. not going to school, um, but the mental health is really impacting a number of our students. And fortunately within our schools, we have day treatment, 
We have a number of resources. That's why we have Horizon on ITRT. Um, they're the specialists. I tell people all the time, I'm the one that's going to take you to court. Um, I'll set up the meeting with you and the judge. Uh, but we really need the mental health piece to be a part of it prior to going to court. So. But that's just for Medicaid recipients, correct? No, not right now. Day treatment can be, uh, it's typically Medicaid, but I think it can be for... Now, with our mental health grant, that's yeah. what we help fund. So since um, we work with Harvest as our provider, and so we do have grant spots for students who don't have Medicaid um, so that we can get them quicker and get them the services and support they need. But it's just a certain amount, number of spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we monitor that to determine if we notice a school has needs, um, you know, based on, on what we're seeing. Gotcha. Thank you. And we provided you all a packet, so you had some examples of these communications that we provide to parents. I don't, I don't want to understate the, the, the value of our school counselors. Just our school counselors, not day treatment, not, not outside providers, but our school counselors spend a monstrous part of their day touching base with dozens of students daily to make sure they're in a good spot to make sure they're ready for the day, to make sure that they have dealt with some of their uh, life issues that they're working through. Much different, uh, much different job than it was 30 years ago. They really, really uh, have stepped up their game. And not day treatment, we're talking about our school counselors stepping in and saying, you're meeting with me. You're, uh, Tuesdays are our day, we're coming, we're having our meeting, we're making sure you're on track. So that's way, you know, Certainly, Harvest wonderful, and they're an external service provider. But our own staff are doing a lot of that, um, and as well they should. Our school counselors also participate in our IT or team. And, it, and at what percentage does it, or how how is it rated that it dings our accreditation at, at this time? It, it's fifteen percent of your students miss ten percent of school at the end of the year. Those students that are um, enrolled at your school less than 50% of the time do not count, I think is what the criteria states. 15% of your students and you're dinged on your accreditation. Which you see those numbers. I mean, right. we're, 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 right we're teetering. Yeah. I mean, yes. and a lot of schools aren't receiving their full accreditation because of attendance. One of the reasons it came right. up in that conference, exactly. that meeting the other night, right. um, should, yeah. it, should it count against the school even though the school is doing all these things to improve attendance. And I can tell you from Campbell County, somebody asked about Campbell County in the state. Um, over the last two years, I have met with about five other localities and gone through this process. They've contacted us and said, can we see your process because we hear your attendance is better. Um, about a month ago, I met with uh, another locality, I won't mention their names, but they're in the state of Virginia. I think their lowest school was about a 30 some percent chronic absentee right now. Wow. Mm. And so it is statewide, but you know, we want to not use that as an excuse. I mean, we still have to do what we do, but locally, we have as good attendance as anyone around because I've met with all of them. We'll keep fighting a good fight. It's frustrating. I hear it from my principals. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item up, security grant. Dr. Stanley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Ranella couldn't be with us tonight, but Dr. Ranella applied for the Virginia Department of Education um, School Security Grant. And we received two hundred and seven thousand dollars, eight hundred and ninety. Uh, excuse me, two hundred and seven thousand eight hundred and eighty-nine dollars um, uh, this year, and uh, that's quite a quite a sum of money. There's a twenty-five percent match that we have, um, so we'll be ponying up another fifty thousand dollars, and that money is going to go towards additional security cameras, um, upgrading our security cameras. It's going to go to a um, vaping detectors um, that we really used last year's grant to put into all of our secondary schools, but we want to make sure that, that we have those everywhere in the building where they're needed. 
um, two-way radios. Um, we're also going to um, look at installing hurricane slash ballistic security window film in some strategic locations in some of our buildings. Uh, it's gonna go towards some perimeter fencing at some of our buildings and um, some more badge readers for our, for our buildings. So it's kind of spread out through all the school, throughout all the schools within the county. I think uh, every school is gonna receive something except for Brookville High School since they're getting the renovation. Um, so, you know, we, we've received this grant, um, certain awards over the last million, few years, yeah. but this is pretty significant. Yeah. So I want you to be aware of that. I guess middle, Rustburg Middle. And Rustburg Middle's not, and Rustburg, Rustburg Middle's not. Middle's not they you. Give them <laughs> they've already got 160 cameras in that building right now, so uh, we think they've got enough. <laughs> okay. That's great. You guys are staying on top of this to make sure that we too apply for every grant out there. Okay, consideration of the 24-25 academic calendar. Dr. Hale. Thank you, Chairman Epperson, members of the board. Um, tonight, this is just information. This is a draft of our 24-25 student calendar, which is hard to believe it's that time of year, but it is. Um, so this has been reviewed by our principals, and I will just highlight some of the main features of the calendar. You do have a copy, um, and then we do have it on the screen. It is very similar to this 23-24 <coughs> school year calendar. The main difference is the holidays fall slightly differently, so that does impact a little bit of when we will be dismissing for some of our breaks and then returning to school. Um, we do have nine work days off for winter break, so it's 13 days total, um, including the weekends. And one of the main features that has been very popular with our staff, with our students, with our families, is fall break. Um, and so fall break is included. Um, we don't quite know how we ever made it without fall break sometimes. So um, fall break is included in October. And then one of the main feedbacks has been in the spring. Um, this spring, we don't have um, always a teacher work day. Um, so we did add that um, for next school year. So there are four total work days. We really have tried to find that balance between time to work and have professional development, but also time for our teachers to catch up, you know, whether that's on lesson planning or on grading. Um, last school year, we did not have weather, so we did approve an additional teacher work day in the spring for last school year. So we really want to make sure that we're spreading those out to be helpful um, to our teachers. Um, it also helps with grading periods as they come to an end. And then a main feature of the calendar is we do need to have 90 days each semester. That is important for our secondary schools. Um, so you can see those are the main features of the calendar um, that we have. Again, informational at this point. Um, and so when we return um, in January, um, then we'll, we'll, we'll start um, for a, a, an action item. Are the graduations locked in? They are. That is a, typically our week with Liberty. That has been our conversation um, because that is usually when we graduate. Yes, sir. Great point. That's a Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Hale. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> Report of the superintendent. Dr. Stanley. Thank you, and um, again, I'd like to thank Lauren uh, for being here tonight and for, for representing your school and everybody so well. Um, a couple months ago, I guess back in October, we also had some students here from Bobby Markey's debate team, and they came in and they, they talked to us about some issues, and one in particular you asked me to go back and, and, and look at, and that was an issue from Madeline Poling, who attends early college. So I went over there really the next day and sat down with Madeline. I had a good conversation with her. And she talked about concerns about the number of credits a student could receive in Gov School versus early college. And so when we, we took a look at that, and really I don't know that there's a way to make those equal. I mean, those are, those are two separate programs um, where one, the Gov School, Governor's School, you know, focuses more on math, science, research they have an opportunity to come back to their home school and take additional coursework, um, where in early college, they have a prescribed program, and if they can get back, they can take a class, but they may not have as much flexibility as, as Gov School students do. Um, so, so both programs kind of have their, their advantages. 
I don't want to call them disadvantages. Um, they're just opportunities that students, you know, have when they choose to do these programs. Um, early college, you may not be able to get as many credits at the same time you can't get an associate's degree. So, so you know, both good programs may not be exactly equal when it comes to opportunities for credit, but since they're regional, it's kind of out of our hands to, to, to change that so much. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. And also in the donations, I wanted to thank Mr. Childress for his generous donation. That, that was uh, incredible. Um, thank him. And I wanted to go back and thank Terry Subaru and Mark Dalton for their donation of the car to the automotive program over here at the Tech Center. They came over here and, and um, Mark always does such a great job of, 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 of working with kids and, and he sees the value of, of providing them with a real world opportunity to get better and, and we really appreciate that partnership. Wanted to remind you that we have a full joint board committee meeting uh, with the Board of Supervisors on January the 9th at 7 o'clock at the Haver Building. And when we sit down with our supervisors, we'll, we'll look at, you know, the kind of the, the financial, you know, uh, status of our county and talk about some spending priorities that we have as a, uh, as a school board. And I would say that when we do that, we're looking at, you know, classified pay scales, teacher pay scales, our capital improvements plan, and then we really need to talk about what we're going to do with student capacities over Tomahawk and, uh, and potentially Leesville Road. So, you know, those are the things that we need to be addressing uh, when it comes to big picture items. Um, I have um, working on a contract with a company called Cooperative Strategies. Um, that's a consultant group that would come in, look at our building capacities, um, look at our enrollments, look at our housing projects going up around Campbell County and make some recommendations for us to consider uh, when making some of these long-term decisions. And then Michelle has shared with you a schedule, a calendar for the budget. If you'll see that, I've talked to Mr. Rogers, our county administrator, and he felt okay with us presenting the draft budget in February, um, but then getting it approved a little bit later gives us a little more flexibility to see what the governor proposes and as well as the House and Senate um, see what those versions look like before we make a final decision in, in, in March. <coughs> so if you've got any questions for me, I'd gladly answer them. Otherwise, it's a lot of information. What so, did you think of your first school board conference? I thought the school board conference was great. As a matter of fact, um, while we were there, we listened to a great speaker. Um, Liz Huntley opened up the, the session, and she did such a great job. We all walked out and said we need a copy of that. <coughs> so I wanted to pass these out. Uh, Christmas gift. Uh, it's from you. Did you autograph them? I didn't autograph them. <laughs> um, anyway, she really talked about her experience, and she talked about the impact that educators had on her life. And, and it was moving to hear her speak. Um, and I hope you enjoy the book. Did you get into Thank the you. principles too? Not yet. Yeah. She was great. She did a great job. Okay, thank you, Dr. Stanley. Matters from the- One question. <coughs> uh, so with this schedule, it looks like we're not going to have a second meeting in February. Is that correct? We've moved that to, to March. Okay. We'll so we basically bumped schedule. the process a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we won't have a second February meeting like we have we'll for two years. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions for Dr. Stanley along those lines? Okay. Matters from the board. Mr. Jones. Um, going along with the school board convention of all the years I've been to it, which is quite a few, I think the two speakers this past month were the best. They would go to the very top of the list of all the speakers. And Miss Huntley, um, her, I guess her title on her portfolio was she was a motivational speaker. 
And when she started talking, I think all of you will agree, she was very monotone, not, not the prototype of a motivational speaker. But after you listened to it for a while, you soon learned that her life story was her motivation. And it was really touching, uh, talking about the people that uh, reached out and hugged her and said they loved her and encouraged her when she was just a small kid and encouraged everybody to do the same thing because you never know, it might be the only hug, the only kiss a kid gets. And just to support every kid you can, uh, help them any way you can, and, and her life story was just truly touching. Uh, I actually wrote the VSBA to find out if uh, audio was available in her speech, and they said no, he couldn't get it. So I hope I hope the book is close to, you know, her speech. But and then Dr. Jack, the superintendent from Fauquier County, he he had a lot of uh, he had a lot of good stuff too. I mean, it was very very it was a very very good um, speaker loaded convention. Uh, the next thing I got the donations uh, certainly, Mr. Childress but also the, the donations that were made to support families at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. I mean, it's, uh, we need to recognize those folks that just really reach out and touch families and individuals. Um, Concord Elementary School, they got a, their, I guess Christmas play is Thursday night and Friday morning. Um, Dr. Renala had a, Jingle Jog Saturday morning had over 120 runners to raise money for the program of bicycles and nutrition, which she's really enthusiastic behind. We had a governor's school meeting Wednesday, and just to let you know that uh, the tuition will probably go up in a couple years. Uh, it's remained the same for the last five or six. And finally, Miss <coughs> Kirby, I don't see you. you're hid behind your <laughs> dad, but all of that started from uh, standing in line to go watch a volleyball game at Rustburg. I was talking to Dr. Shields and Kenny, Lauren's dad, and and they got to saying about this club, and Kenny said, come over here, Lauren, tell him about it, and all she had to do was talk like a minute, and I said, ho, oh, just ho, oh, why don't you just come and tell the school board, and that was what a month and a half ago, yes, sir. and 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 I've watched her at football games since then, and and she's just a constant move. I think is it an ame amoeba is just constantly moving. <laughs> when she's cheering, everybody else may be standing and gloom and doom, but she's always got a smile on her face and she's moving to the skipping motion, not just walking, but a skip. And, and she's just a ball of enthusiasm. And just what you said is just touching to all of us. It's just really, uh, and Ms. Womack and Ms. Went, yeah, appreciate y'all's support. But, you know, I think thinking about the truancy part of our problem, you know, what you got going on could maybe touch some of the truancy problems. So really, and I would ask, hopefully speaking on behalf of the board, I'd like for you to go back and thank all of the people that participate in this program for us, because it's truly a great thing. And thank you so much for sharing your time. Thank you. I definitely will tell them. Thank you. I think Barry's done. <laughs> so, uh, so a great meeting tonight. Um, again, Miss Kirby, outstanding uh, efforts, presentation, as well as our teachers that are helping you out. Especially knowing what kind of troublemaker your father is at BWXT. Um, no, I'm kidding. You have great parents as well. So, um, and the Brookville High School update was great, Mr. B. Craft. I see you're still here. My apologies for the door joke, um, but you guys did an outstanding job on Rustburg Middle School, and looking forward to having you work on Brookville High School for us uh, with the new design team. So, uh, I don't know if our spectrum. Get them in here. Okay. All right. <laughs> Give them my appreciation as well. So, um, let's see the truancy update. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abbott. Um, like I said, great work. Uh, got a lot of work cut out for us ahead. But uh, thank you and Mr. Siskin. Uh, 
Dr. Hale for your, your efforts in that regard. Um, the security grant was uh, great news to hear about, so um, looks like that's going to be put to good news. How does a vape detector, is that like a smoke detector that mm -hmm. just goes off? Okay. I'll and wait, it, I believe I, it sends the message to a cell phone it so somebody can go right to it. Okay, mm -hmm. neat. All right. Yeah. So good <laughs> stuff there. Um, school wise, got a little bit of information from. Dr. Shields, um, winter sports is underway with basketball, wrestling, indoor track, so um, everything is in full swing there. And we have a government students going to Washington, D.C. I think they're going on Wednesday, so that'll be a great trip, a great opportunity for our students in Campbell County. And then uh, something I look forward to every year, it's that time of year we have the Christmas chorus concerts and band concerts so they're going on Tuesday and Thursday this week at Rustburg High School 7 p.m. Um, over Yellow Branch and this is good to hear they uh, they had their breakfast with Santa for the first time since pre-COVID so good to hear that we're getting back to normal still with some of those activities um, and they have a couple of performances um, on the 12th at 6 p.m. and then on the 19th at 9.30 a.m. A couple of holiday performances at Yellow Branch and then Rustburg Middle School, a lot going on there as well. Uh, they had a junior honor society program and induction ceremony with uh, 60 students inducted in with 300 parents in attendance. So great uh, turnout for that. And they also have uh, had a winter chorus event back on the 5th and on the 30th of November, they took a trip to the D-Day Memorial. Um, so, good opportunity there at Rustburg Middle as well. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Yep. Ms. Parker. Yeah, that was more than Barry. Oh, gave Barry a hard time. Did <laughs> Giving him a little bit of a challenge. On, so. and, uh, and I'm gonna be shorter than normal, so I'll give you guys some extra time down the, down the line for me. Um, yeah, the donations, oh my goodness, Mr. Childers. And then Brooke Neal, uh, I don't want to misread it, my screen just left me, but the uh, church that donated, Brooke Neal, Moose Lodge, and Br Brooke Neal Presbyterian. Yeah. I mean, that was, those <laughs> awesome donations as well. So that's awesome. I'll just keep saying awesome. You can tell I'm tired tonight. Um, regarding the high school and Miss Lauren, you know, I've been, seeing a lot of speakers lately. I mean, at state, federal level, I mean, you seem so comfortable. Yeah. You're extremely articulate. Your presentation was amazing. And you could just tell it came from the heart and was well prepared. And what a great program. I actually, you know, um, in my family have some special needs uh, students at all different levels. And I can't imagine how awesome it would be. And I do have to tell on one of my kids, he had a buddy uh, to help him, a backpack buddy, when he had, was in transitional first grade, and he dismissed his buddy from helping him pack his backpack. I started noticing, you know, he wasn't getting his homework done. So, uh, but that was, of course, elementary school. I uh, can't imagine the benefit at high, the high school level. That's so great. And thank you so much. And to both the teachers, too. It's amazing. Uh, and I leaned over to, to Clay and said, you know, where is the press? right yeah. they're never around when there's good news I mean it's just it's really a shame but thank you guys for all that you're doing there it's awesome um, and then the truancy team you know I bugged them a little bit last year and you know wanted to see if there was any way I could help it it really is is just a challenge and I appreciate you guys being willing to do that job because um, I, I understand all of the different problems that you're facing now, and I really do appreciate it. And Denton, for everything, I tell people, I actually talk about you more than you have any idea, um, that I could not do your job, and I appreciate <laughs> all that you do, and your book of school law, your school law book on your desk, um, whenever I have a question, I really appreciate it. And, and to Miss Hunley, actually, too. Um, the challenge, the struggle is real, but oh my gosh, you do such an amazing job and people want to come work at Campbell County because of everybody here and everybody at all of our schools. So I really appreciate it and proud, uh, more proud all the time to, to work for Campbell County Schools. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Dr. Miller. Well, <clears throat> this has been a great meeting and um, it certainly started on a high note. 
and um, it's, it's just great. And um, this is growing friendship. It, it sounds like it should be, like say, like a national program, and that it started at such a grassroots right here. I think I think it could go places. So, uh, but uh, just wonderful. And I agree with Ms. Parker. Your presentation was beautiful. It was, it was good. You're going to go places. Um, thank you, Blair and Spectrum. I'm really excited about this project and um, looking forward to just, you know, one day at a time, one week at a time, and uh, getting it done. I'm really happy about the security grant. Um, so, a couple things. Um, the, the state meeting was, um, I, I agree with Barry, it was one of the better ones. Um, speakers were great, but they had really good breakout sessions, too. I thought they really did. I went to um, absenteeism, uh, AI, growing your own teachers, and uh, I just it was a good program, and so I'm glad we got to go. And then last week, or what, what day? It was it's Thursday. Thursday. It just, you know, last week, we had the regional listening tour at... Um, Bedford Middle School from the state superintendent and Dr. Siebert, who's on the um, state board. And um, it, it was very, I, I came away with very encouraged that they're, um, they seem intent, one, to listen, and two, to really redo and relook at how Virginia accredits schools and, um, and, and separating accreditation and accountability measuring absenteeism, not necessarily having it affect our accreditation. Um, and so it, it, I, think that, I think things are going to change, and, um, and they did really seem to have a sense of sincerity about it. So um, I'm hopeful that um, at the state level things are going to change and that trickle down, it'll, it'll benefit us and uh, benefit our schools. So, so that was good. And then talk to Mr. Bennett, um, absenteeism, every time we talk about it. And he, he's encouraged, it's better, it's much better, but it's still, it, it's still what's dragging these kids down. They gotta be in school. Uh, he does feel his behavior situations are improving. Again, thanks to the donors uh, down in Brook Neal, they so support that school. And um, not only the donations to, for those kids, um, they've already bought presents for all the kids with all that money. But on Friday, they're hosting their, their winter festival that, again, donors pay for. And there's over 900 people coming to this for nice. full dinner. And um, just very, it's a very encouraging um, community. William Campbell had their winter, uh, winter band concert. Um, Ms. Hansen is very excited about her new band teacher. A lot of enthusiasm, doing a great job. They had their art show. The kids did pet portraits, and then they auctioned them off, and the money went to, um, there's a fundraiser for the Campbell County uh, Humane Society, or um, I guess Animal Control, but it was a fundraiser for painting pet por uh, portraits. JV Basketball volunteered and went down to the elementary school and read to the kids. Varsity Basketball were volunteers at the Deck the Hall race in Alta Vista. Um, they had their 11th grade performance tests, and on the writing one, all passed except for one. And they're doing their math ones this week. Um, talk to them a little bit. Talk to her a little bit about Virginia All In. Um, they're very. Um, she's very appreciative of the additional licensing that allows her to do a little bit more, especially in the reading, and her math 180 support. And she's appreciative of all the support she's getting. And. Um, thank you for the truancy. Um, to keep up the good work and um, arm twisting, begging, I don't know, but you've got to get the kids in school. So, that's all. Thank you, Dr. Bill. I won't be much shorter on that. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Darla McGuire. She was chosen as Lynchburg's 2023 Virginia Economic Educator of the Year. She was one of eight chosen in Virginia. Um, our volleyball team was region champ, state runner-up. Deborah Spencer was, although we lost in the state, she was chosen as coach of the year. That's pretty amazing. 
Cross country, the boys region champs, third in state. The girls region runner up, ninth in the state. Daryl Smith was region coach of the year. Football, we were region 1B champs. Matt Deloche was region coach of the year. This is his first year at Altabest. He went 10 and 4. He's done a great job. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the conference in Williamsburg. One thing amazed me about this lady, you talk about teachers making an impact. I don't know, was it her second or third grade teacher was there when her chi her second child was born? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what y'all do is lifetime work. Um, one of the best parts for me on, on the school board conference was we got to eat dinner with George and Martha Washington. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we had pictures of, Ken, do you need some pictures of George down there? We, we have those. <laughs> <laughs> and and last but not least, uh, Reed Childers. Um, Christmas came early for the kids in Alta Vista. For those of you who don't know, he gave us five hundred thousand dollars to build a field house. And that's he's a he was. I grew up across the street from him. He's a alumni class of '78, and he's just interested in our kids. So. But I'd like to thank Gary because. Talk to him quite a bit about it. No, this has been so. going on for a year, but it's been sort of hush hush. So, mm -hmm. but we look forward to that project and hope it's something everybody can be proud of. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Leon, well, I'll get to you in a minute. You're <laughs> <laughs> not next yet. He got, a book, last. he got a book down here. That's right. No, uh, <clears throat> let me let me let me go ahead and get mine out the way, and then we're gonna let you finish up. Oh, okay. Um. Just going back here for uh, for a minute, uh, I would, Lauren. I, I know everybody said it, but I had to, I can't not say it one more time. You guys are amazing. Thank you for everything you're doing, uh, Ms. Womack, Ms. 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 I went. We appreciate all the help, all the support, and hopefully this will can spread to the other schools in Campbell County because that's a truly a great thing you're doing. And I do believe that it, that is something that can help truancy. When people feel like they want to be, kids feel like they want to be at school, um, it can't hurt, that's for sure. So thank you so, so very much. Blair Spectrum, thank you guys for the update. Looking forward to breaking ground. Excited about what's in store for Brookville High School over the next couple of years. Like you said, I'm sure there'll be some growing pains, but looking forward to what the end product is going to look like. So. Thank you very much. Um, had a chance to go to Brookville High School, what was it when, uh, Friday? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Went over and got to judge the Christmas tree, I mean the Christmas doors, the decorations on the doors, and it was just so neat to see all the enthusiasm in the school and, and the pride that everyone takes and decorating their tree, uh, their doors, and uh, it just, just really a neat afternoon, great walking around talking to the kids, talking to the students. That was a lot of fun. And, okay. Uh, we had a great time. Um, security grant, that's 200,000 plus. That's great. Uh, Mr. Childers donation, thank you too, Gary, for, for helping work through that process. That's just awesome. Uh, thanks to all our donations that we get. Uh, Dalton, Terry, uh, Volkswagen, Subaru, I mean, I don't want to forget them. I know they gave the presentation, or it was last month, but it was that's great. We appreciate all their their support and their help. And uh, yeah, that's it. Except one more thing. <laughs> we couldn't let you get away, Leon. Yeah. So as everybody knows, this is Leon's last uh, board meeting. Uh, he's retiring after 30... 30 and a half. 30 and a half years. So... Uh, we're going, to, we're going to miss him, but I, in, in honor of, uh, of what you mean to Campbell County, Leon, and what you mean to us, what you mean to me personally as a friend, uh, I'd like to present you with this uh, plaque. It's uh, R. Leon Brandt, Jr., Sunburst District, 30 years of service. Thank you for your service to the children of Campbell County Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to also say I've known Leon 
see, David, help me, because I've known Leon as long as you and Joe have been friends, and that's got to be 20-plus years. Um, for those that don't know, my son Joe and, and David uh, graduated together at Brookville, and uh, I've known Leon a long, long time. In fact, he's the one that dragged me into this mess 12 years ago. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, it's been an honor, Leon, to know you for the last 12, 20 plus years. I appreciate all, everything you've done for me, the mentoring as I took over here on the board as I took this seat. I appreciate everything you've done for me. I appreciate everything you've done for the kids of Campbell County. Your commitment, your passion for Campbell County Public Schools, and anybody can say anything, they'll never ever question what, you, what Campbell County Schools has meant to you. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Now you can speak. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Let me just say first, I echo everything up until Mr. Epperson uh, had his speech here, but everything else has been said here tonight, uh, I echo it. Uh, but I have to say, Lauren, that was excellent. What you have done, what you are doing, and um, I hopefully the other high schools will do the same thing, along with the other middle schools. Very nice job. Very proud of you. Don't know you, but very proud of you. <laughs> uh, also wanted to uh, brag a little bit about uh, Brookville High School for a second. First time this year. I think I've done that. <clears throat> <laughs> but uh, Lynchburg Living Magazine voted Brookville High School the top public school, the gold level. You know, I looked and saw that we were higher than Jefferson Forest and EC, EC Glass. It made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about the last, and for you ones that don't know, the last 40 years. Uh, well, 44 years, I reckon it would be. Uh, I served on the Nelson County Board of Supervisors for nine and a half years. 1980 to 1989, July or June 30th of 89. Uh, and I served with some mighty good people there like I have right here in Campbell. But I always learn one thing. If you start thanking somebody, you better start at home first. So uh, my wife, Susan, she's here tonight, just got operated on two weeks ago, uh, knee surgery, complete knee surgery, but she Came in here with a walker, and she's here tonight. Susan, can you stand? <laughs> uh, I couldn't have done it without her for over 40 years. Now, and my son David, David was, is here with us tonight. Our other son and uh, daughter-in-laws uh, are taking care of the family business. So we'll just leave it at that. And, um, but, you know, when I came to Lynchburg, uh, well, I had a business here in Lynchburg and uh, sold it recently, but um, I was going by uh, Lisa Rose School and um, going by the schools, I would go and uh, help them at lunchtime with our old son, Tim, uh, having lunch and opening up milk cartons and everything. And I saw, and when I would leave, I would start to see uh, the, one of our great uh, school board members, Ms. Bully Martin, was there. And at those days, it was not a day of just being a secretary or answering the phone. She was like many other uh, school secretaries. She was the nurse and the assistant principal and everything else. And, uh, and I said, Lord, my, how, did, how can she do all that? So shortly after I came on the board in 93, we started talking about things that was needed. And I said something about getting nurses in our schools. And lo and behold, the board at that time uh, chose to uh, 
spend the money to take care of and have nurses, and now we have nurses in every school. Shortly after that, uh, we talked with the board of supervisors and we talked with the sheriff's department about SROs and trying to bring those into the schools. And we started in high schools and things like that. And, and, uh, and we had uh, the time to uh, bring, the forth, bring forth the uh, sheriff's department had the employees to take care of all our schools. And I believe that we were the first uh, school division in the Commonwealth to put uh, SRO officers, uh, in, you know, in the uh, in our schools. And I was Sheriff Hutchinson did that, but he had a mighty fine gentleman that oversaw that and was here and been with us and keeping me straight for many, uh, many, many years, Mike. Can you stand back there, please? <laughs> Mike Lawhorn. <laughs> he and many other deputies have done an excellent job in making sure that our, all of our meetings are safe and everything of that sort. So it, it comes a time that you've got to look back and say thank you to all the ones in Nelson, the citizens who voted me in. Uh, and I was the last one who was appointed by the Board of Supervisors in 1993. Um, after that, we went to elected school boards. Well, that's the right thing to do. I'm not going to get into that conversation because we've been talking too long up here tonight. But to all my colleagues here tonight and all the ones in the past, it's been an honor and privilege to serve with each and every one of them. But, and I also say that it's very important not to leave anybody out. So I'm going to say all of the employees of the Campbell County School System, it's an honor to be with you. And uh, now we have the time for uh, change in, in the Sunburst District. Karen Tanner is going to be our new representative. And I tell you, we're very fortunate and very, I'm very proud say she will be representing me. That's all I got. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Dr. Stanley, if he'd like to say a couple words. Well, I just want to say on behalf of the, of the staff and all the employees, um, I know this is a hard job, and, and Leon, we appreciate everything that you have done over the past 30 years, your, your mentorship, your guidance, um, and, and really your, your love of the kids of the school division and for Brookville, uh, the Brookville schools. You know? yeah. um, thank you for what you do. And thank you. uh, hey, you're going to be missed. Thank you. Want to get a picture real quick yes. before we? Let's do that. <coughs> get a picture with the board members and Leon. Oh, Lord. And the, uh, we'll break the camera now. <coughs> Name those shots in. Okay. At this time, I believe we have a need to adjourn to a closed meeting. I'll entertain a motion. 
Mr. Chairman, I move we convene in a closed meeting for discussion or consideration of disciplinary matters or other matters that would involve the disclosure of information contained in the scholastic record concerning students in the school division, specifically student number 33 from the 23-24 school year in accordance with section 2.2-3711 parentheses A, parentheses 2 of the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended. Second. Yeah, I have a, got a motion by Mr. Phillips and a second by Mr. Brandt. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, let's take a quick five-minute <coughs> recess and we'll come back and reconvene in a closed session.
Okay. At this time, I ask for a motion certifying that to the best of each member's knowledge that during our closed meeting, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the school board. So moved. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Brandt, a second by Mr. Phillips. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. Okay, do we have any other? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the administration's recommendations on student number 33. <coughs> second. Okay, we've got a motion by Mr. Jones and a second by Mr. Maddox. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Take it home, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> if there's nothing else to come before this board this evening, I make a motion we adjourn. Got a motion by Mr. Brandt. I will second that. Got a second by Dr. Miller. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.